So, uh, order. Mr. Chairman, there are instances when, after we've done all the research and completed all other options and exhausted them, a legislative remedy may still be required in order to help our constituents in our district offices with a particular problem. Uh, those occasions give us the opportunity to evidence how Congress can work on their behalf, how Congress can help solve problems, and how Congress can have a direct and positive effect on people's lives. This is one of those times, uh, and I appreciate the fact that the Rules Committee has made this amendment in order. This amendment seeks to assist those people who, while they were in the process of pursuing their dream of home ownership, were unfairly impacted by a statutory change to HUD's upfront mortgage insurance premium refund policy. Now, under HUD's upfront mortgage insurance premium refund policy, borrowers paid an upfront mortgage insurance of 1.5% of their FHA loan amount, and if they prepaid their loans, the borrowers could be due refunds on that prepaid insurance amount. However, in 2005, with the Consolidated Appropriations Act, Congress included language directing that for mortgages after the time that date of enactment, which was December 8, 2004, that would no longer be true. Borrowers would no longer be eligible for refunds of their prepaid insurance. So now there are about 15,000 people in this country who try to do the right thing and play by the rules. They are constituents of all of ours who closed on their mortgage before that December 8, 2004 date in order to be able to get their refund. But regrettably, they were prevented from receiving their refund because HUD didn't endorse their loan until after December 8, 2004. Now, the constituents tell us they were never adequately informed by the lender of those potential revisions, and the lenders tell us they didn't do it because they weren't told by HUD until after the effective date, in fact, not until January of 2005. I know of particular one family in particular in my district from Gloucester, Massachusetts, who were harmed by that new provision in the law. They did everything right. They played by the rules. They closed their loan in November of 2004 without notice of the change of law. But they've been pre prevented from receiving their refund of some $4,200 because HUD didn't endorse their mortgage until after December 10th of 2004. Certainly, that's an unintended consequence of the provisions in the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2005. This amendment makes a meaningful first step toward helping certain eligible homeowners and borrowers, low-income families, as I say, who played by the rules. And I say this is a first step because we did later have to go to appropriations to get money to fulfill this policy. But this clearly is the right policy. It is the fair thing to do. It is the right thing to do. And we'll have to discuss and argue about the money to appropriate in order to make whole these people at a later date. But I suggest that if we all want to do the right thing by policy, I urge my colleagues to support this amendment. I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from Massachusetts reserves the balance of his time. Gentleman from West Virginia, for what purpose? Uh, I'd like to claim time in opposition to the amendment. Gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you. Um, I certainly think the gentleman from Massachusetts brings forward uh, an issue, uh, and I have great sympathy for those who are got basically sounds like in a bureaucratic um, uh, maze here, a little bit missed a date. Uh, by not really by their own doing, but by uh, maybe just because of the process that they were involved in. The question I have, and the reason I have uh, skepticism on the gentleman's amendment, and he's, he began with this. I think the number that uh, the gentleman said this may influence uh, 15,000 uh, folks. Was that the number that you that you cited you in your statement? 15,000. Are you yielding? Yes. Yes. Yield to you. Yes. Uh, 15,593, uh, according to the department. And the other question I would ask the gentleman, and I know that we have to go to you would have to go to appropriations to get the money uh, allotted for this particular amendment. But what would the exact, I mean, what would the approximate cost of something like that? This is what we're in this time of debt and deficit, and and we're, uh, we we need to cut our spending here. I think we need to be very vigilant on the bottom line. What is the bottom line of this amendment? Yes, I yield to the gentleman. I thank the gentleman for yielding, and I thank you for raising that point that this is a two-step process. Right. This part of the process, in fact, talks about whether or not we're going to have a policy that will enable us at some appropriate time mm -hmm. to, to appropriate the money. Right. So we're not appropriating the money now, and I think that's a debate for another day at another time if we decide whether or not we want to be fair to these people or put it off to some other time. But the total for that 15,593 people, according to the department, would be Ten million three hundred seventy-two thousand six hundred sixty-one dollars and sixty-one cents, more or less. Thank you. Very precise. I appreciate that. Uh, and I, I still have uh, skepticism about even ten million, which uh, in everyday dollars is still quite a bit of money. And we, as I said, we need to look at uh, 
at what uh, what we're doing on the bottom line here. So I, I while I am very sympathetic and I think that uh, the amendment has some merit, I would uh, stand in opposition to the amendment. All right. Yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman uh, yields the balance of the time. Uh, gentleman from Massachusetts. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I understand that $10 million is $10 million, and that's a lot of money to each one of us individually. Uh, and, of course, we should be concerned it's not proportionally a lot in our $1.7 trillion budget. Uh, but I think the real number to look at here is what does it mean to these individuals who are harmed by government policy on no doing of their own? So if it's $4,200 to a family in my district or $4,200 to a gentleman in her district, that's what's driving our economy right now. And for people to have every expectation of getting the return of that money and to play by the rules in order to get it, only to have the bureaucracy undercut them, I think that's the issue of fairness that we're dealing here. Now, we'll have an issue later on about whether or not we think now is the appropriate time to put $10 million on the, on the floor to help people out. Uh, and that'll be a debate for them. But I think we should deal with the policy now and authorize that for that to be done at some date, either this year or next year, or whenever we can make the argument in Congress that it's time to be fair. I think we can all say in this amount, given the huge meaning this is to individuals, now is the time to be fair. 15,000 people wronged by government bureaucracy in amounts that are every bit as significant to them individually, the $4,200, as $10 million may be to all of us in the aggregate. An impact on their lives, it's whether or not their family is going to be able to make it through this crisis, whether or not they're going to be able to meet the everyday needs of food and health care and education and clothing and those things that are important to their family. And again, uh, in closing, I just reiterate, this is the authorization process. Let's set the policy of fairness. We can debate the other later. And let's keep in mind that these people played by the rules, did what was right, and deserve to know that at least as a policy matter, Congress will stand with them. With that, I yield back to balance my time as well. Gentlemen from Massachusetts.